Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Welcome to Shabbat Service for Waymaker Messianic Jewish and Christian Center USA. We welcome everyone who is here with us today. And for those who will listen in later on the archives as well, we pray that this is a blessing to each and every one of you. Well, it is Saturday, March 18th, 2023. This is the recording for Saturday, March 18th, 2023 on the Gregorian calendar and on the Hebrew calendar year of 5783. It is the month of Adar and the 25th day. And this is the day that the Lord has made. We will be glad and rejoice in it. I do have a couple announcements for this upcoming week. We are continuing with the Bible study, and we're using the English Standard Version of the Bible currently, and we will be beginning the book of Daniel, chapters 1 through 6 this week. And as we're getting closer to Passover, if you remember at the beginning of March, uh, began in in ancient days, in, in, in ancient Egypt, the plagues had begun. So during this week, um, in, in correlation to the upcoming Passover, we would be focusing on the plagues of, of the hail. Now, last week, of course, we had the, the, the livestock was struck, the boils. Um, and also, we have the, the locusts then as well. And we had covered that in Parashat Bow. And also the plague of darkness. So you might want to read um, Exodus chapters 9 and 10 um, in this upcoming week. Also, um, in this upcoming week, uh, we will be uh, having Rosh Kadesh service um, on Wednesday evening. um, And that will be to bring in the month of Nisan. And it is also a new moon. And also Tuesday evening. On our free conference call.com channel, we meet live in real time at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You're welcome to join us, and you can join by phone or by web address. I do post to four social media platforms uh, of MeWe, Gab, USA.life, and Facebook. And within the body of that, that message that I post, you will find hyperlinks to the phone access and then also the second one is to the web the web link so you can join either way um, what you would do with the phone is dial your in country number there's there's a list of 80 80 plus different nations this is the free list that freeconferencecall.com gave to us um, you would dial your in country number and then wait for the prompts and um, there's an access code at the top right hand corner um, you would, when prompted, you would enter that access code. That access code is the same for every single nation. Um, and after you enter the access code numbers, don't forget to hit the number sign and that will bring you into the conference. Um, you can join by web address. Um, you would need to download the the app, which is very safe. It, just like any other download, you would then run the exec, follow the prompts into the classroom. It is set up like an online classroom, which it is. And also um, it has a built-in microphone, camera, and chat area. So you're welcome to join um, to join us on Tuesday evenings. We meet for fellowship, for corporate prayer. We have used this uh, platform for various purposes, teaching purposes. Um, it, it is it is a good time for the body of Christ to come together and support one another. We have also hosted musicians and writers in the past. So if that is your ministry and you would like another platform on which to add, which which to uh, to engage in um, and get out what you're doing for the kingdom of heaven, you can certainly reach out to me. We'd be glad to host you. We do have the ability to do MP3 and MP4 recordings. And I have done them in the past when we have hosted. So that is pretty much the announcements I have for this week. We have uh, a lot to cover this week because we have a double pair shot. So I'm going to open with our opening prayer, invite the Holy Spirit in to lead us and guide us in this week's Shabbat service. Avina Malkina, our Father, our King, we thank you. We thank you for today. We thank you for every day because every day is a gift from you. 
And Father God, we thank you for Shabbat. For this is the day that you've sanctified as holy. And we're keeping that in honor of you. And we're here to be in your presence, to be in your Shekinah glory. We ask your Holy Spirit to lead us, to guide us, to direct us in the entire Shabbat service. Open the eyes of our heart. Open the ears of our heart as well, that we may be receptive to your holy word and incorporate what it is that we need to incorporate in our walk with you. And we love you, Father God. When we give you all our praise, all our praise goes to you. And you are so worthy of our praise. You're a wonderful, amazing, awesome, awesome Father who set us the example of Shabbat. When you created all of creation in six days and you rested on the seventh day, you did this as a perfect example for us. Father God, we give you our praise. All honor and glory goes to you. And we pray this prayer in the mighty name, the name above all names, the name of our King, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. Amen and Amen. Exodus chapter 20, beginning with verse 8, it says, Remember, Yom Shabbat, to keep it holy. You are to work six days and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Shabbat to Adonai, your God. In it you shall not do any work. Not you, nor your son, your daughter, your male servant, your female servant, your cattle, nor the outsider that is within your gates. For in six days that and I made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, and rested on the seventh day. Thus Ed and I blessed Yom Shabbat and made it holy. And say with me now the Lord's greatest commandment. And you can fo- you can follow along if you have uh, the. Messianic Jewish Family Bible, Tree of Life version. Uh, this is this is on page fourteen o three. Um, if you do not, uh, you can you can turn to Deuteronomy, chapter six, beginning with verse four. Shema Israel Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Baruch Shem Kevod Mahuto Leolam Vayad. Hear, O Israel, Adonai is our God. Adonai is one. Blessed is the name of his glorious kingdom for all eternity. And you shall love Adonai your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These words which I am commanding you today are to be on your heart. You are to teach them diligently to your children and speak of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down and when you rise up. Find them as a sign on your hand. They are to be as frontlets between your eyes and write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. And Yeshua gave the second greatest commandment and said, And you shall love your neighbor as yourself. The entire Torah and prophets hang on these two commandments. The Amidah, standing before God, we're going to say three of the blessings. And the first blessing is the patriarchs. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, and God of our fathers, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob, the great, mighty, and awesome God, God most high, who bestows loving kindness and creates all who remembers the kindnesses of the fathers and brings a redeemer to their descendants for the sake of his name. In love, King Helper, Savior, and Shield, blessed are you, Adonai, Shield of Abraham. The second blessing is God's might. You are mighty forever, Lord, giving life to the dead. Great is your saving power. He sustains the living with steadfast love and with great compassion gives life to the dead. He upholds the fallen, heals the sick, sets the captives free, and keeps faith with those who sleep in the dust. Who is like you, master of might, and who can compare with you, O king, who brings death, restores life, and causes salvation to flourish? You are faithful to revive the dead. Blessed are you, Adonai, who gives life to the dead. And the third blessing is holiness. And the Hebrew word for holiness is Kedusha. You are holy, and your name is holy. And holy ones praise you every day. Blessed are you, Adonai, the holy God. And the word holy in Hebrew is also known as kadosh. Matavu, how lovely. How lovely your tents are, O Jacob, and your dwellings, O Israel. Because of your great loving kindness, I will bow down towards your holy temple in awe of you. Adonai, I love the house where you live, the place where your glory dwells. 
As for me, I will bow and worship. I will kneel before Adonai, my maker. As for me, my prayer to you, Adonai, is for a time of favor, O God, and your great love. Answer me with the truth of your salvation. And at Chaim, the tree of life declaration, we say this of the Torah. It is a tree of life to those who grasp it, and happy are those who cling to it. Its ways are ways of pleasantness, and all its paths are shalom. Bring us back to you, Adonai, and we will return, renew our days as of old. By Yam Hahu in that day, and it is said, Adonai will then be king over all the earth. In that day, Adonai will be Echad, and his name Echad. And the word Echad means one or a composite oneness. May God's great name be magnified and sanctified. Amen. In the world that he created by his will, and may he establish his kingdom, cause salvation to sprout, and may he bring the Messiah closer. Amen. In your lifetime and in your days, and within the lifetime of the entire house of Israel, speedily and soon, and say, Amen. May his great name be blessed forever and ever, blessed and praised, glorified and exalted, extolled and honored, uplifted and lauded, be the name of the Holy One. Blessed be he who is beyond all blessing and song, praise and consolation, spoken in the world, and say, Amen. May there be abundant peace from heaven and life upon us and upon all Israel, and say, Amen. May he who makes peace in his heights make peace upon us and upon all Israel, and say, Amen. And the blessing of Messiah, Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Neten Lanu Devar HaKayim Mashiach Yeshua, Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, King of the universe, who has given us the word of life, Messiah Yeshua. Say with me now Messiah's prayer. Our Father in heaven, sanctified be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And in the ancient days, the high priest sounded the shofar to gather the children of Israel for worship. And this is our call to worship. I am going to call, I am going to actually pause, and I mean, uh, for you to listen to some praise and worship songs. Uh, we do not incorporate the songs uh, in this recording because, uh, as, as many of you know who've been following us, um, at, when we started recording online and making it available there was a lot of issues with so many different platforms so we just never started uh, incorporating the songs um, and what we have done is we when I post a social media platform I will post the scriptures that are for this week and then I will also post a series of songs part one and part two of the recorded Shabbat service and then another series of songs um, because praise and worship is extremely important uh, is one of the most important elements of any service so yes we do praise and worship and I don't want anybody to miss out on praise and worship uh, so this is how we've been handling it uh, for quite some time so and of course, if you have your own praise and worship that you prefer to listen to, that is fine. Uh, I do. We do pause it for you to be able to go ahead and do so. Um, one of the nice things about actually posting uh, the songs, suggested songs, on social media is you need to click on to the actual artist's YouTube channel. So you're actually helping those artists. Uh, because a lot of them that I use are independent artists and this is how they get paid by by our views when we we view their their YouTube channels so yes you're helping them and they're bringing us anointed songs and this is their calling for the work of the kingdom of heaven so we're all working together so 
So there's a plus side to that. The other thing I want to encourage you to do is while you're on uh, these individual YouTube channels, take a look around. Also, uh, many of them post hyperlinks to where you can connect to uh, like other other areas where you can um, buy their music. And by all means, if you're able to do so, uh, please support them. Uh, so this, so it may direct you to a website or or to uh, a place like iTunes or or Apple Music or or Bandcamp or any of those or or even Amazon has a lot of these artists uh, music that you can buy digitally or uh, buy their actual CDs. So please, if you have a, if you have the means of supporting them, uh, this is what keeps them going and, and keeps them uh, able to uh, bring us the anointed music that they do so we can praise and worship our Father in heaven. Amen. Amen. Well, with that being said, I'm going to pause it and then we're going to come back with the Torah and half Torah portion for part one. Okay, we've got a lot of ground to cover this week. We've got double Parashat this week. And we've got Parashat like Vayakel, I'm sorry, and and that means an assemble or and he assembled. And that will be Torah portion uh, Exodus chapter 35, verse 1 through 38, verse 20. And we're going to just continue right into the the net, the second parashat, which is parashat Pekadei, and, it, and that stands for accounts or counting, and that will be from Exodus chapter 38, verse 21, to chapter 40, verse 38. So we're going to get started with um, Parashat Vakayel, and assemble or and he assembled. Chapter 35, offerings for the tabernacle. Then Moses assembled all the congregation of Benaiah Israel and said to them, these are the words which Adonai has commanded you to do. Work is to be done for six days, but the seventh day is a holy day for you. A Shabbat, a complete rest to Adonai, Whoever does any work then will die. Do not kindle a fire in any of your dwellings on Yom Shabbat. Moses also said to all the congregation of Benaiah Israel, this is the word which Adonai commanded, saying, Take from among you an offering for Adonai. Whoever has a willing heart, let him bring Adonai's offering, gold, silver, and bronze, blue, purple, and scarlet cloth, fine linen and goat hair, ram skins, dyed, dyed red, seal skins, and acacia wood, oil for the light, spices for the anointing oil, and for the sweet incense, onyx stones and setting stones for the ephod and for the breastplate. Let every wise-hearted man among you come and make everything that Adonai has commanded, including the tabernacle, its tent and its covering, its clasps and its boards, its crossbars, its pillars and its bases, the ark and the poles, the atonement cover and the curtain screen the table and its poles with all of its utensils along with the bread of the presence. Also the, men the menorah for light with its utensils, its lamps and the oil for the light, the altar of incense and its poles, the anointing oil, the sweet incense, and the screen for the entrance of the tabernacle, the altar of burnt offering with its grafting of bronze, its poles and all its utensils, the basin and its stand, the hangings of the courtyard, the pillars and their bases, and the curtain for the gate of the courtyard, the pegs of the tabernacle, and the courtyard along with their cords, the woven garments for ministering in the holy place, the holy garments for Aaron, the Kohen, and for his sons to minister as Kohanim. Then all the congregation of Benaiah Israel departed from before Moses, everyone whose heart stirred him, and everyone whose spirit was willing came and brought Adonai's offering for the work of the tent of meeting and for all its service as well as for the holy garments. So they came, both men and women, everyone whose heart compelled him, and brought nose rings, earrings, signet rings, bracelets, and all kinds of gold and jewels, everyone who brought a wave offering of gold for Adonai, everyone who had blue, purple, scarlet, fine linen, goat hair, ram skins dyed red, who could make a contribution of silver or bronze, brought Adonai's offering, and every man who had a case of wood of any use 
for service brought it. Also, all the women who were wise hearted spun with their hands and brought what they had woven, the blue, purple, scarlet, and fine linen. All the women whose hearts stirred them up with wisdom spun the goat hair. Also, the leaders brought onyx stones and setting stones for the ephod and for the breastplate, along with the spice, the oil for the light, and for anointing and for, for the sweet incense. Every man and woman whose heart made them willing gave toward all the work that Adonai had commanded to be done by Moses' hand. So Benaiah Israel brought it as a free will offering to Adonai. Then Moses said to Benaiah Israel, See, Adonai has called by name Bezalel, son of Uri, son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. He has filled him with the Ruach of God, with wisdom, understanding, and knowledge, and all manner of craftsmanship to make ingenious designs to work in gold, silver, bronze, and bronze, as well as cutting gemstones for setting, wood carving, to make all kinds of skillful craftsmanship. He has also placed in his heart the ability to teach both he and Aholiab, son of Ahizamath, of the tribe of Dan. He has filled them with wisdom of heart to forge all the works of an engraver, an artisan, and an embroiderer in blue, purple, scarlet, and in fine linen, as well as weaving. They can perform every craft and ingenious designs. Chapter 36 So Bezalel and Aholiab are to work along with every wise-hearted man in whom Adonai has placed insight and understanding to know how to perform all the labor for the service of the sanctuary according to everything Adonai has commanded. Then Moses called Bezalel, Aholiab, and all the wise-hearted men in whose minds Adonai had set wisdom along with everyone whose heart stirred him up to come to do the work. They received from Moses the entire offering that Benai Israel had brought for the work of the service of the sanctuary to build it. They brought free will offerings to him morning after morning. Then all the skilled men who were doing all the work of the sanctuary came one by one from the work he was doing and said to Moses, the people are bringing much more than enough for the work of this construction that Adonai has commanded to be done. So Moses gave an order and they proclaimed it throughout the camp saying, let neither man nor woman make anything else as an offering for the sanctuary. So the people were restrained from bringing more for the work material they had was sufficient for all the work with much left over. So all the wise-hearted men among them did the work. They made the tabernacle with ten curtains of finely twisted linen, along with blue, purple, and scarlet with, sh with cherubim. The work of a skillful craftsman, the length of each curtain was 28 cubits, and the width of each curtain was four cubits. All the curtains had one measure. Then he coupled five curtains to, to one another, and the other five curtains he also coupled together. He made blue loops on the edge of the curtain that was outermost within the first set. He did the same along the edge of the curtain that was outermost in the second set. He made 50 loops in one curtain and 50 loops on the edge of the curtain that was in the second set so that the loops were opposite to one another. Also he made 50 clasps of gold and coupled the curtains one to another with the clasps so that the tabernacle was one. Then he made curtains from goat hair for a tent over the tabernacle, he made 11 curtains. The length of each curtain was 30 cubits, and the width of each was 4 cubits. The 11 curtains had one measure. He coupled five curtains by themselves and six other curtains by themselves. He made 50 loops on the edge of the curtain that was outermost in the first set and 50 loops on the edge of the curtain that was the outermost in the second set. Also, he made 50 bronze clasps to couple the tent together so that it would be one. Then he made a covering for the tent of ram's skins dyed red along with, along with a covering of seal skins above. He also made the framework of boards for the tabernacle from acacia wood standing upright. The length of a board was 10 cubits. The width was a cubit and a half. Each board had two supports joined one to another. He did this for all the boards of the tabernacle. So he built the boards for the tabernacle, 20 boards from the south side southward. And he made 40 silver bases under the 20 boards, two bases under one board for its two supports, and two bases under one board for its two supports. Also for the second side of the tabernacle on the north side, he made 20 boards, along with their 40 silver bases, two under one, two under one board and two under the next. 
For the next part of the tabernacle westward, he made six boards. He also made two boards for the corner of the tabernacle in the back so that they could be doubled underneath and in the same way to be fixed to the top at the first ring. He did this for both of them at the two corners. So there were eight boards along with their silver bases, 16 in all, two under each board. Then he made crossbars from acacia wood, five for the boards on one one side of the tabernacle, five for the boards on the other side of the tabernacle, and five crossbars for the boards, I'm sorry, crossbars for the boards of the tabernacle for the back part westward. He built a middle crossbar to pass through in the center of the boards from one end to the other. He overlaid the boards with gold and made golden rings for them as holders for the crossbars and overlaid the crossbars with gold. Then he made the curtain of blue, purple, scarlet, and finely twisted linen, along with the cherubim. The work of a skillful craftsman. He made four pillars of acacia and overlaid them with gold, having golden hooks, and he cast four silver bases for them. Then he made a paraquet. And we're going to talk about, we're going to just mention here, so I just mentioned the word parquet, and that's P-A-R-O-K-H-E-T. That is the dividing curtain in the temple for the Holy of Holies. So then he made a parquet for the entrance of the tent of blue, purple, scarlet, and finely twisted linen, the work of a color weaver. Also, he made the five pillars with their hooks and overlaid their capitals and bands with gold along with their five bronze bases. Chapter 37, the Ark Table, Menorah, Incense, Altar. Bezalel also made the Ark from acacia wood two and a half cubits long, a cubit and a half wide, and a cubit and a half high. He overlaid it with pure gold inside and out and made a crown of gold for, all, for it all around. He cast four golden rings for it in the four feet, two rings on the one side and two on the other. He also made poles of acacia wood and overlaid them with gold. Then he put the poles into the rings on the sides of the ark to carry the ark. He made an atonement cover of pure gold, two and a half cubits long and a cubit and a half wide. Then he forged two cherubim of gold from hammered work at the two ends of the atonement cover, one cherub at one end and one cherub at the other. He made the atonement cover from a single piece with cherubim on the two ends. So the cherubim so the cherubim spread out their wings on high, overshadowing the atonement cover with their wings, with their faces to one another, and the faces of the cherubim towards the atonement cover. Then he made the table of acacia wood, two cubits long, a cubit wide, and a cubit and a half high. He overlaid it with pure gold and made a gold, golden crown all around. Also, he made a border for it, a hand width around and made a golden crown for the border all around. He cast four golden rings for it and put the rings into the four corners that were on the four feet. The rings were close to the borders as holders for the poles to carry the table. He also made the poles of acacia wood and overlaid them with gold to carry the table. He forged the articles that were on the table, the dishes, pans, bowls, and jars with which to pour out of pure gold. Then he made the menorah of pure gold and of hammered work, even its base, its stem, its cups, its bulbs, and its flowers were one piece with it. There were six branches going out of the sides, three branches out of one side and three branches out, the, out of the other. Three cups made like almond blossoms were in one branch, a bulb within a flower, and three cups made like almond blossoms in the next branch, another bulb within a flower. It was just so for the six branches going out of the menorah. Also within the menorah were four cups made like almond blossoms, bulbs, and flowers with a bulb under two branches of one piece, a second bulb under two branches of another piece, and a bulb under two branches of a third piece for six branches extending out of it. Their bulbs and their branches were one piece with it, an entire hammered work of pure gold. He also made the seven lamps along with tongues and censers of pure gold. He made them from a talent of pure gold along with all the pieces. He made the altar of incense from acacia wood 
a cubit long, a cubit wide, squared, and two cubits high. The horns were one piece with it. Then he overlaid it with pure gold on top, on the sides, all around, and over its horns. Also he made a crown of gold for it all around. He also made two, two golden rings for it underneath the crown on two sides as holders for poles in order to carry it. He made the poles of acacia wood and overlaid them with gold. Then he made the holy anointing oil and the pure incense of sweet spices, the blend of a perfumer. Chapter 38, Altar for Sacrifices. Then he made the altar for burnt offering from acacia wood. It was square, five cubits long, five cubits wide, and three cubits high. He also made the horns on the four corners from one piece and overlaid it with bronze. Then he made all the utensils for the altar, the pots and the shovels, the basins, the forks, and the fire pans. He made all the utensils from bronze. He also made a bronze grating net for the altar under the ledge around it, reaching halfway up. He cast four rings for the four ends of the bronze grating to be holders for the poles. He made the poles of acacia wood and overlaid them with bronze. Then he put the poles into the rings on the sides of the altar to carry it and he made it hollow out of boards. He made the basin and the base from bronze with mirrors from the women who, who served at the entrance of the tent of meeting. Then he made the courtyard for the south side. The hangings of the courtyard were finely twisted linen, 100 cubits long. There were 20 pillars and 20 bronze bases. The hooks of the pillars and their, and their bands were silver. Likewise, from the north side, 100 cubits long, with 20 bronze pillars and bases, and the hooks for the pillars and their bands were silver. For the west side, the hangings were 50 cubits with 10 pillars and their 10 bases, as well as the hooks for the pillars and their silver bands. Likewise, for the east side, 50 cubits long, the hangings for one side of the gate were 15 cubits with three pillars and their bases. Similarly, for the other side, on either side of the gate of the courtyard were hangings of 15 cubits with their three pillars and three bases, all the hangings of the courtyard all around were of finely twisted linen. The bases for the pillars were bronze, the hooks of the pillars and their bands were silver, and the overlaying of their capital, capitals were silver, and all the pillars of the courtyard were ringed with silver. The curtain for the gate of the courtyard was the work of a color weaver of blue, purple, scarlet, and finely twisted linen. It was 20 cubits long and five cubits high, like the hangings of the courtyard. There are four pillars and four bases were bronze, their hooks along with the overlaying of their capitals, and their bands were silver. All the pegs of the tabernacle in the courtyard all around were bronze. And that is the end of Parash Parashat Vayakel, and assemble, or and he assembled, and you can see what they were assembling. Um, so we're going to go right into Parashat Pekadei, and that is accounts or counting, and this is continuing with uh, chapter 38 of Exodus, beginning with verse 21, and to the very end of the book of Exodus, which is the 38th verse of the 40th chapter, Parashat Pekadei. These are the accounts of the tabernacle, the testimony as they were recorded according to the commandment of Moses by the service of the Levites under the hand of Ithamar, son of Aaron, the Kohen, Bezalel, son of Uri, son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah, made all that Adonai commanded Moses. Along with him, Aholiab, son of Ahizamach, of the tribe of Dan, a craftsman, a skillful work, workman, and a weaver of colors in blue, purple, scarlet, and fine linen, the entirety of the gold that was used for the work of the sanctuary, including the gold of the offering, was 29 talents and 730 shekels, according to the sanctuary shekel. The silver from those numbered from the congregation was 100 talents and 1775 shekels, according that's 1775 shekels, according to the sanctuary shekel. That is, Becca or half a shekel per head, according to the shekel of sanctuary for everyone who was recorded from 20 years old and upward for 603,550 men. These 100 talents of silver were for casting the bases of the sanctuary and the bases for the inner curtain, 100 bases for 100 talents, a talent for each base. The 1,775 shekels he made into hooks for the pillars overlaid their capitals and made bands for them. 
the bronze from the offering was 70 talents and 2,400 shekels. With it, he made the basis for the entrance of the tent of meeting, the bronze altar, the bronze grating, all the utensils for the altar, along with the basis of the courtyard all around, the basis for the gate of the courtyard, as well as all the pegs of the tabernacle and the pegs for the courtyard all around. Chapter 39, Holy Garments for Aaron and his sons. Now, I just want to say a talent of silver uh, contained 3,000 shekels. So holy garments for Aaron and his sons. Next, they made woven garments of blue, purple, and scarlet for ministering in the holy place. They made the holy garments for Aaron as Adonai commanded Moses. He made the ephod of gold, blue, purple, scarlet, and finely twisted linen. They hammered the gold into thin plates and cut it into threads to work it in with the blue, purple, and scarlet within the fine linen, the work of a skillful craftsman. Then they made shoulder pieces for it, joined together at the two ends. The artfully woven band on the ephod with which to gird it was of the same piece and the same kind of workmanship of gold, blue, purple, scarlet, and finely twisted linen as Adonai commanded Moses. They placed the onyx stones enclosed in the settings of gold etched with the engravings of a signet seal according to the names of the Nye Israel. He put them on the shoulder pieces of the ephod to be memorial stones for Benaiah Israel, as Adonai commanded Moses. He made the breastplate the work of a skillful craftsman, like the work of the ephod of gold, blue, purple, scarlet, and finely twisted linen. It was square and folded double, and a span long and a span wide. They mounted within his four rows of stones, a row of ruby, topaz, and emerald were the first row. In the second row were turquoise, a sapphire sapphire and a diamond in the third row was a jason jason and agate and an amethyst in the fourth row were, were beryl and onyx and jet and a jasper they were enclosed in fittings of gold within their settings the stones corresponded to the names of benai israel like the engravings of a signet seal each one according to its name for the 12 tribes they attached braided chains to the breastplate of wreath work from pure gold they made two settings of gold and two golden rings and set the two rings on the two ends of the breastplate. They attached the two golden chains to the two rings at the ends of the breastplate. The other two ends of the chains they placed on the two settings and fastened them on the shoulder pieces of the ephod in the front. They also made two golden rings and set them on the two ends of the breastplate on the edge that was toward the, the side of the ephod facing inward. They made two more rings of gold and put them on the two shoulder pieces of the ephod underneath in the front and closed by their coupling above the artfully woven band of the ephod. Then they bound the breastplate by the rings to the rings of the ephod with a blue thread so that it would rest on the artfully woven band and not to be loosened from the ephod. As Adonai commanded Moses, he also made the robe of the ephod from woven work all of blue with a hole in the center of the robe and a binding woven around the hole as a collar so that it would not be torn. They also made on the hem, on the robe pomegranates of blue, purple, scarlet, and twisted linen. Then they made bells of pure gold and put the bells between the pomegranates on the hem of the robe all around between the pomegranates, a bell and a pomegranate, then another bell and a pomegranate all around on the hem of the robe to minister in as Adonai commanded Moses. Then they made the sashes of fine linen, woven work for Aaron and for his sons, the turban of fine linen, the, the headwear, the linen undergarments of finely twisted linen, along with the tunic of checkered work in blue, purple, and scarlet, the work of a color weaver, as Adonai commanded Moses. Finally, they made the plate of the holy coronet from pure gold and wrote an inscription on it, like the engraving of a signet seal, holy to Adonai. They tied it to a blue thread and fastened onto the turban above, as Adonai commanded Moses. So all the work of the tabernacle, the tent of meeting, was finished. Benai Israel did everything according to what Adonai had commanded Moses. They did it just so. Then they brought the tabernacle to Moses, along with the tent and all of its furnishings, its clasps, its boards, its crossbars, its pillars, and its bases, along with the covering of ram skins dyed red and the covering of seal skins, the veil of the curtain, as well as the ark of the testimony with its poles and the atonement cover, the table, and all 
of its utensils, the showbread, the pure menorah with its lamps to be set in order along with all of its utensils and, and oil for the light, the golden altar, the anointing oil, the sweet incense, and the curtain for the entrance of the tent, the bronze altar, its grating and its poles, along with all its utensils, and the basin and its base, the hangings for the courtyard, with its pillars, its bases, and the curtains for the gate of the courtyard, and its cords and its pegs, along with all the instruments for the service of the tabernacle of the tents of meeting, as well as the woven garments for ministering in the sanctuary, the holy garments for Aaron the Kohan and for his sons to serve as Kohanim, according to everything that Adonai had commanded Moses, Benai Israel had done all the work just so. When Moses saw the entire work and that they had done it just as that and I had commanded, Moses blessed them. Chapter 40, setting up the tabernacle. Then Adonai spoke to Moses, saying, On the first day of the first month you will set up the tabernacle of the tent of meeting. You are to put the ark of the testimony there and screen off the ark with a curtain. Then bring in the table and set in, in order the bread that is on it. Bring in the menorah and light its lamps. Set the golden incense altar in front of the Ark of the Testimony and hang the curtain over the entrance of the tabernacle. Set the altar of the burnt offering before the entrance of the tabernacle, the tent of meetings. Set up the basin between the tent of meeting and the altar and put water in it. Set up the courtyard all around and hang the curtain of the gate of the courtyard. Take the anointing oil and anoint the tabernacle and everything within it and consecrate it along with all of its furnishings and it will be holy. Also, you are to anoint the altar of burnt offering with all of its utensils and consecrate the altar. The altar will be most holy. Then you are to anoint the basin along with its base and sanctify it. Bring Aaron and his sons to the entrance of the tent of meeting and wash them with water. Put the holy garments on Aaron, anoint him and consecrate him, consecrate him so that he may minister to me as a Kohen. Also, bring his sons and put tunics on them. You are to anoint them as you did their father so that they too may minister to me as Kohanim. Their anointing will be for an everlasting priesthood throughout their generations. Moses did just so, just as that and I had commanded him. Now it happened during the first month of the second year. On the, on the first day of the month, the tabernacle was raised up. Moses raised the tabernacle and laid its bases, set up the framework of boards. Then he spread the tent over the tabernacle and put the covering of the tent on it, just as Adonai had commanded Moses. He placed the testimony into the ark, set the poles on the ark, and put the atonement cover on top of the ark. He brought the ark into the tabernacle, set up the curtain as a screen, and screened off the ark of the testimony, just as Adonai had commanded Moses. Then he set up the, ta the table inside the tent of meeting, on the side of the tabernacle, northward outside the curtain. He set a row of bread in order upon it, before Adonai, just as Adonai had commanded Moses, then he placed the menorah in the tent of meeting over against the table on the south side of the tabernacle. Then he lit the lamps before Adonai, just as Adonai had commanded Moses. Next, he placed the golden altar in the tent of meeting before the curtain, and he burned sweet spices of incense there, just as Adonai had commanded Moses. He hung the curtain over the entrance of the tabernacle, then he set the altar of burnt offering at the entrance of the tabernacle, the tent of meeting, and offered upon it the burnt offering and the grain offering, just as that and I had commanded Moses. Next, he set up the basin between the tent of meeting and the altar and put water in it for washing so that Moses, Aaron, and his sons could wash their hands and their feet there. When they went into the tent of meeting and when they came near to the altar, they washed just as that and I had commanded Moses. He set up the courtyard around the tabernacle and the altar and set up the screen at the gate of the courtyard so Moses finished the work. Glory fills the tabernacle. Then the cloud covered the tent of meeting and the glory of Adonai filled the tabernacle. Moses was unable to enter into the tent of meeting because the cloud resided there and the glory of Adonai filled the tabernacle. Now whenever the cloud was taken up from the, over the tabernacle, Benai Israel went onward throughout all their journeys. But if the cloud was not taken up, then they did not move out until the day that it was. For the cloud of Adonai was on the tabernacle by day, and a fire was there by night 
in the sight of all the house of Israel throughout all their journeys. And that is the end of our Torah portion. So we're going to recap on this. Last week, we saw how Adonai instructed Moses how to make the tabernacle, its vessels, offering, and the offerings and the priestly garments. And this week, it opens with Moses calling for public assembly of the entire community of Israel. At this assembly, he relays to them what Adonai told them on the mountain. The Hebrew word vayakal, meaning to assemble, convene, or gather, is related to kahal. K-A-H-A-L, meaning assembly, convocation, and congregation. And the word kahila is a derivative word. It can mean community, and that's K-E-H-I-L-L-A. Most Messianic congregations refer to them as a kahila rather than church, and that's K-E-H-I-L-L-A-H. Since the word is not derived, uh, church, uh, the word church is not derived from Hebrew. Now remember less than a week earlier, uh, uh, Benai Israel uh, had assembled uh, that, that they had been worshiping the golden calf. Now Moses instructs them in the way of Adonai. And the first instruction Moses gives the people concerns the Sabbath, which, which Adonai set apart as a day of holiness elevating it above the rest of the week. And on this day, no work was to be done. And the commandment to keep Shabbat is so important in the Torah that anyone found working on this holy day could receive the death penalty. They would actually back in the ancient days. Um, there are two words for work in Hebrew, av- avodah and melaka, and, and the one used is this passage uh, does not typically mean physical exertion. Avada can mean also being in service. And Malika, M-A-L-E-K-A-H, traditionally interpreted as the, the 39 different categories of work that went into building the tabernacle is the type of work specified in Exodus. Now also um, on the Sabbath, they were even forbidden to light a fire um, in their homes. You heard that that Moses Moses told the people not to do that. Now we see the work that was done on the tabernacle was a creative work that involved producing, making, or creating with mastery, mastery, um, every every intricate detail that Adonai had given to Moses. The word avodah, A-V-O-D-A-H, is also work, but often in the form of cultivating or performing service. The Bible defines the Sabbath day, and this is this has always been a contention, but the Bible clearly defines the Sabbath day, Shabbat, as the seventh day. And again, it was always in it, it's in the evening, Friday evening to Saturday evening, not the first day or any other day of the week. The most holy day is this. Nothing in the Bible commands a Sabbath to be kept on any other day, period. Because of that, it is clear um, we we don't have the authority to change Adonai's holy days. Now, where that all happened, <laughs> uh, we won't even go there. According to Daniel, that would constitute acting in the spirit of an Antichrist who would seek to change the times and the laws. So we need to be careful about that, and, and, and we need to come back to, to what is sanctified as holy. Amen? Amen. And this is, this is also, you know, why do many keep Sunday as Sabbath? Who initiated and sanctioned this change in the times and the law? Hmm. Generally acknowledge that the reason many keep this and keep Sunday instead of Saturday is because the Roman Catholic Church changed the day to Sunday, believing that it had the authority to do so. And the following two quotes came from Catholic publications, and not to not, not to put down the Catholics, um, we're not doing that, but this is where it came, and it really is not biblical. Um, we observe Sunday instead of Saturday because the church and the council of Laodicea, A.D., 
364 transfer transfer the solemnity to Sunday. The Converts Catechism of Catholic Doctrine, 1957. Sunday is our mark of authority. The church is above the Bible. This is what they said. The Catholic Record of London, Ontario, 1923. And this transference of Sabbath observance is proof of that. No, 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 no. So this is where this came about also. And there's also, uh, yes, thought to have a lot of pagan influence too to the sun god um, as well. So, uh, and I'm not faulting anybody who worships on Sunday. I, I, you know, I really do believe that, you know, we need to honor God every single day. Amen. Amen. But um, it does need to be addressed (laughs) because it isn't biblical. Yeshua on the Sabbath. The observance of, the, of Shabbat is often perceived as burdensome. Those, however, who do keep it sincerely, seeking the Lord, experience wonderful rest and great joy on this day. Even Yeshua kept Shabbat, and the Brit Kadashah states that it was his custom to be in synagogue on that day, a custom shared by Paul. Yeshua never spoke against keeping the Shabbat and completely acknowledged it, calling himself the Lord of the Shabbat. There were a very few situations in which Yeshua's commitment to Torah and the Sabbath were called into question by the religious leaders of his day, and he took these opportunities to address some errors in the way the commandment was being applied. For instance, one day when Yeshua's disciples were walking through the grain fields on Shabbat, they picked heads of grain to eat because they were hungry. And the Pharisees object to this because reaping is considered working. Um, Therefore, they accuse the disciples of breaking the Shabbat, saying, look, your disciples are doing what is not lawful to do on the Sabbath. Of course, the disciples were not picking grain for the purpose of harvesting. They were simply satisfying immediate hunger. And Yeshua essentially rebuked them, pointing to the fact that David and his companions entered the house of God and ate the consecrated bread when they were suffering from extreme hunger. The understanding of Shabbat, one should feast on this day. In fact, the the time that the law permitted fasting on the Shabbat is on Yom, Yom Kippur, Day of Atonement. Uh, Yeshua also pointed out that the priests were not are, are not guilty of breaking the Sabbath when they do their appointed work in the temple. Because that's work too, that's service. But they're doing their work in the temple and that's not breaking Sabbath. Immediately after this discussion, Yeshua entered the synagogue and saw a man with a withered hand, and he was then asked if it was lawful to heal on the Sabbath, and we know that he did heal. Although uh, Pharisaic Judaism might have been divided on this issue during the time of Yeshua, this principle that Yeshua is teaching here actually became law and is taught today in Orthodox Judaism for the the reason here, uh, for for that reason, because he actually answered, what man is there among you who has a sheep? And if it falls into a pit on the Sabbath, will you not take hold of it and lift it out? How much more valuable than is this man who he was going to heal uh, of a withered hand than a sheep? So then it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath. So emergency services run on Shabbat. It's the principle uh, that preserving human life overrides virtually any other religious consideration. Therefore, for instance, if a sidewalk is icy on Shabbat, putting down salt, though it is considered work, is encouraged in order to prevent injury. So they're allowed to do that. Um, So also, the free will offerings, that the terama was uh, different from a tithe, um, and that was given in, given to, in order to get the tabernacle built. People were coming with gold, silver, uh, uh, garments, threads, blue, purple, scarlet, acacia wood, oil, you name it. Um, And they gave lavishly to to build uh, the tabernacle. Um, And actually, um, (laughs) they brought so much. They were so, so uh, willing to do this, but they brought so much that... um, the craftsmen had to tell Moses, hey, they need to stop. We have more than enough. And so the so Moses told them to stop. Um, so we know that um, 
Bezalel um, and Aholiab uh, were in charge of, of, you know, they were, they were, the Ruach breathed into them um, the talents and everything. And, and they had, they, as well as other, uh, other people that has helped to assemble all of this. And so they got it all built and ready to go. And they, they presented it to Moses and then Parashat Pekodei accounts and an accounting is made of the materials and the eight priestly garments are made according to specifications in Parashat Tetzaveh. Um, the tabernacle was also completed and a cloud appears over it. The divine presence has come to dwell within it. Now, the word for glory is kavod, K-A-V-O-D. It is related to the Hebrew word kaved, K-A-V-E-D, which means to honor, to be honored, and to be heavy. So in Pekadei, we also see that the priestly garments, everything that was was to be made for Aaron and his sons were made. And then again, as Parashat Pekadei ended, the glory of the Lord was present. And there was a cloud filled by day and the fire burned at night. And when the cloud was was there, they could not move forward. The, the children of Israel God wanted them to stay in place. When it was lifted, that meant they could move on. And they knew, you know, God led them through the wilderness this way. And we're going to see in the half tour portion, the glory of God falls on Solomon's temple, because we're going to get into um, that as a parallel as well. Now, the book of Exodus began with uh, the children of Israel enslaved in Egypt, and it ends with a visible demonstration of the Shekinah glory of Adonai, and those who follow the master Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah, have personally experienced freedom from slavery, from slavery of sin. Uh, In him, we are free indeed. Uh, Before we knew Yeshua, we we were enslaved to sin, longing to be delivered from the kingdom of darkness. Now his Torah is written on our hearts, and his Ruach HaKadosh dwells within us, transforming us into the people he has called us to be. Second Corinthians chapter three, verse 18 says, but we all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as from the Lord, the spirit. So we saw uh, the building of the tabernacle was definitely a community affair. Everybody came together um, that it, their hearts were stirred to do this for Adonai uh, as he has asked them to. Uh, and they the, the, they were such a joyful outpouring of resources that they were actually told to, to stop giving. They, they, were, they were just so willing to be part of this. And it's just wonderful. They were definitely cheerful givers. <laughs> and they did everything according to how Adonai instructed them to do. And Moses blessed them for for doing that. And this is like 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 I had said earlier. This is after the whole incident with the golden calf. They had actually they were actually back on track and doing what they needed to do. And uh, and they were being blessed at this point. So the half Torah portion, we've got three areas that we're going to be reading from. The first is from the book of First Kings chapter 7, verses 1 through um, chapter 8, verse verse um, 66. So basically we're doing chapter 7 and chapter 8. Solomon's palace complex. But it took Solomon 13 years to build and complete his own palace. He also built the forest house of Lebanon in Its length was 100 cubits, its width 50 cubits, and its height 30 cubits, built on four rows of cedar pillars with cedar beams upon the pillars. It was paneled with cedar above the side chambers, which were on 45 pillars, 15 in a row, and there were window frames in three rows with window opposite window in three ranks. And all the doorways had rectangular frame width and width windows opposite to window in three tiers. He also made a portico of columns 50 cubits long and 30 cubits wide 
with a porch in front. And in front of that were pillars and an overhanging with roof, an overhanging roof. He also made the hall of the throne where he would judge the hall of justice. It was paneled with cedar from the floor for the ceiling. His house where he would dwell set farther back of the hall was of the same construction. He also made a house like this hall for Pharaoh's daughter, whom Solomon had taken to wife. All these were made of expensive st stones, stone cut to size and sewed with saws inside and outside from the foundation to the top and from the outside to the great court. The foundation was also made of expensive stones, huge stones, stones eight cubits and stones ten cubits. Above were expensive stones cut to measure and cedar wood. The surrounding great courtyard had three rows of cut stone and a row of cedar beams, the same as the inner court of the house of Adonai and the portico of the house. Hiram, the bronze craftsman, King Solomon sent for and had Hiram brought from Tyre. He was a widow's son from the tribe of Naphtali, while his father was a man of Tyre, a coppersmith, and he was filled with wisdom and understanding and skilled to do any work in bronze. So he came to King Solomon and executed all his work. He fashioned the two bronze pillars, 18 cubits high and, eight, and 12 cubits in circumference each. So you can see this is a parallel to the, the tabernacle that was, was carried um, throughout the wilderness um, that was a mobile, uh, tent, the tent of meeting was mobile. This is the stationary temple, the first temple. He also made two capitals of molten bronze to set upon the tops of the pillars. The height of each capital was five cubits, nettings of lattice work, and twisted threads of chain work for the capitals were on top of the pillars, seven for the one capital and seven for the other capital. So he made the pillars with two rows of pomegranates all around on the netting covering the capitals on top of each capital. Capital that were on the top of the pillars in the portico of lily design four cubits high. So also the capitals on the two pillars close to the belly next to the netting were the pomegranates and rows of 200 around both capitals. Thus he set the pillars at the porticos of the temple. He set up the right pillar and named it Jachin, and he set up the left pillar and named it Boaz. On the top of the pillars, was lily designed. So the work of the pillars was finished. Next, he made the sea of cast metal, 10 cubits across from brim to brim, circular in form, 5 cubits in its height, and 30 cubits in circumference. Under its brim, there were gourds encircling it, 10 per cubit, completely surrounding the sea. The gourds were cast in two rows in one piece with it. It stood on 12 oxen, 3 facing north, 3 facing west, 3 facing south, and 3 facing east. And the sea was set on top of them, and all their rear parts were inward. It was a hand breadth thick, and its brim was made like the brim of a cup, like the petals of a lily. It held 11,000 gallons. And he made 10 bases of bronze. The length of each base was four cubits, the width four cubits, and the height three cubits. The structure of the bases was as follows. They had borders, and the borders between the frames, and on the borders that were below the frames were lions, oxen, and cherubim. On the frames, there was a pedestal manor above and beneath the lions and, and oxen were wreaths of hanging work. Each base had four bronze wheels with bronze axles. Its four legs had brackets. The brackets were beneath the laver cast with wreaths at each side. Its opening inside the crown at the top, of, top was a cubit high and its opening was round like the design of a pedestal, a cubit and a half. And also on its opening were engravings and their borders were square, not round. The four wheels were underneath the borders, and the axles of the wheels were in the base. The height of a wheel was a cubit and a half, and the structure of the wheels was like it, the structure of a chariot wheel. Their axle trees, their rims, their spokes, and their hobs were all cast metal. There were four brackets at the four corners of each base. Each bracket was one piece with the base itself. On top of the base, there was a band half, a, band half, a cubit high. Encircling it, its braces and its borders were part of it. On the plates of the braces and on the, on its borders, engraved cher cherubim 
lions and palm trees wherever there was a clear space around it with encircling wreath. He made the ten bases like this, all of them cast from the same mold, the same size, and the same shape. Then he made ten basins of bronze. One basin held 220 gallons. Each basin was four cubits, and on each of the ten bases was one basin. Then he set up the labor stands, five on the right side of the house and five on the left side of the house, and set up the sea of cast metal on the right side of the house eastward towards the towards the south then Hiram made the basins the shovels and the sprinkling bowls so Hiram finished doing all the work that he performed for King Solomon and Adonai's house the two pillars the two bowls of the capitals that were on the on top of the pillars the two nettings to cover the two bowls of the capitals that were on the top of the pillars the 400 pomegranates for the two nettings two rows of pomegranates for each to cover the two bowls of the capital on top of the pillars. The ten basins and the ten basins on the bases. The one sea and the twelve oxen under the sea, the pots, the shovels, and the basins. All these vessels Hiram made for King Solomon in the house of Adonai were made of polished bronze. The king had them cast in the plain of the Jordan with clay of the ground between Sukkot and Zarephan. Solomon left all the vessels unweighed because there, there were too many. The weight of the bronze could not be determined. So Solomon made all the equipment that was to be in the house of Adonai, the golden altar, the table on which the bread of the presence of gold. The menorahs, the five on the right side and the five on the left in front of the inner sanctuary of pure gold. The flowers, the lamps, the tongues of gold, the cups, the snuffers, the bowls, the wick trimmers and the fire pans of pure gold and the hinges for the doors of the inner house, the house of holies, and for the door of the house that is is of the temple of gold. When all the work that King Solomon did in Adonai's house, Solomon brought in the things that his father David had dedicated. The silver, the gold, and the vessels, and put them in the treasuries of the house of Adonai, dedicating the temple. Chapter eight. Sorry about that. I'm doing this recording and one of the tabs decided to play a commercial. So anyway, I'm dedicating, <laughs> you never know what happens when we're recording live, I'm dedicating the temple. Then Solomon assembled the elders of Israel, all the heads of the tribes and the ancestral chieftains of the children of Israel to King Solomon in Jerusalem to bring the Ark of the Covenant of Adonai up from the city of David, which is Zion. All the men of Israel assembled themselves to King Solomon at the feast in the month of Ethanim, which is the seventh month. Now, that was the biblical month. Of course, we know that these months have been changed um, after the Babylonian captivity. Um, then all the elders of Israel came and the company brought up the ark. They brought up the ark of Adonai, the tent of meeting, and all the holy vessels that were in the tent of Kohanim. And the Levites brought them up. Now King Solomon and all the congregation of Israel who were assembled to him were with him before the ark, sacrificing so many sheep and oxen that they could not be numbered or counted. The Kohanim brought the ark of the covenant of Adonai to its place into the inner sanctuary of the house to the holy of holies under the wings of the cherubim. For the cherubim spread out their wings over the place of the ark, and the cherubim covered the ark and its poles from above. But the poles were so long that the ends of the poles were seen from the holy place before the inner sanctuary, but they could not be seen outside. There they are to this day. Nothing was in the ark except the two tables of stone that Moses put there at Horeb. When Adonai cut a covenant with the children of Israel, when they came out, of the land of Egypt. Now when the Kohanim came out of the holy place, a cloud filled the house of Adonai so that the Kohanim could not stand a minister before because of the cloud. Now remember that happened with Moses in the, the tent of meeting. The glory of Adonai filled the house of Adonai. Then Solomon spoke. Adonai said that he would dwell in the thick cloud. I have surely built you a magnificent house, a place for your dwelling forever. Then the king turned his face about and blessed the whole congregation of Israel. While the whole congregation of Israel was standing, he said, Blessed be Adonai, the God of Israel, who spoke with his mouth to my father David and has fulfilled it by his hand, saying, 
since the day I brought my people Israel out from Egypt, I have not chosen a city out of all the tribes of Israel to build a house where my name would be there. But I have chosen David to be over my people Israel. Now it was in the heart of my father David to build a house for the name of Adonai, the God of Israel. But Adonai said to my father David, because it was in your heart to build a house for my name, you did well that it was in your house. Nevertheless, you will not build a house, but your son who will come out of your loins, he shall build a house for my name. Now Adonai has fulfilled his word that he spoke, for I have risen in the place of my father David and sit on the throne of Israel as Adonai promised. Also I have built the house for the name of Adonai, the God of Israel, and have set there a place for the ark, in which is the covenant of Adonai, which he made with our fathers when he brought them out of the land of Egypt. Then Solomon stood before the altar of Adonai, in the presence of all the congregation of Israel, spread out his hands towards heaven and said, Adonai, God of Israel, there is no God like you in heaven above or on earth below, keeping covenant and loving kindness to your servants who walk with you before you with all their heart. You have kept what you promised with your servant David, my father. Yes, you spoke with your mouth and fulfilled it with your hand as, as it is this day. Now, therefore, Adonai, God of Israel, keep with your servant David, my father, what you have promised him, saying, You shall not lack a man to sit before me on the throne of Israel, if only your children watch their way, walking before me as you have walked before me. Now, therefore, God of Israel, please let your words be confirmed, which you spoke to your servant, my father, David. So will God really dwell on the earth? Behold, heaven and the heaven of the heavens cannot contain you. How much less this house that I have built? Nevertheless, turn to the prayer of your servant and to his supplication. Adonai, my God, to listen to the cry and to the prayer which your servant prays before you this day. Let your eyes be open towards this house, night and day, towards the place of which you have said, My name shall be there. Listen to the prayer which your servant shall pray towards this place. So listen to the supplication of your servant and of your people Israel when they pray towards this place, here in heaven your dwelling place, and when you hear, forgive. If a man sins against his neighbor and is made to take an oath, then comes and swears before your altar in this house, then hear from heaven and act and judge your servants, condemning the wicked, bringing his way on his own head, and justifying the righteous, giving him according to his righteousness. When your people Israel are defeated before an enemy because they have sinned against you, if they turn back to you and confess your name and pray and make supplication to you in this house, then hear from heaven and forgive the sin of your people Israel and bring them back to the land which you gave to their fathers. When the, the skies are shut up and there is no rain because they have sinned against you, yet if they pray towards this place and confess your name and turn from their sin because you have afflicted them, then hear from heaven and forgive the sin of your servants and your people Israel. Teach them the good way in which they should walk and send rain on your land, which you gave to your people as an inheritance. If there is a famine in the land, if there is pestilence, if there be blight or mildew, locusts or caterpillar, if their enemy should besiege them in the land of their cities, whatever plague or sickness, when prayer or supplication is made by anyone or by all your people Israel, each knowing the plague of his own heart, when one spreads his hands towards his house, then may you hear from heaven your dwelling place for given acts, and give to each man according to all his ways, as you know his heart to be. For you alone know the hearts of all the children of men. Then they will fear you all the days that they live in their, the land that you gave to our fathers. Moreover, concerning the foreigner who is not of your people, Israel, when he comes from a distant country because of your name, for they will hear of your great name, of your mighty hand and your outstretched arm when he comes to pray towards this house, then may you hear from heaven your dwelling place and do according to all that the foreigner asks of you. So all the peoples of the earth may know your name, to fear you as your people Israel do, and know that this house that I have built is called by your name. When your people go out to battle against their enemy by whatever way you send them, and they pray to Adonai toward the city which you have chosen and towards the house which I have built for your name, then hear from heaven in their prayer, and their supplication and maintain their cause if they sin against you, for there is no man that does not sin, and you become angry with them and deliver them to the enemy, and their captors carry them away captive to the, to the land of the enemy far off or near. Yet if they take it to the heart 
in the land which they have been carried captive and they repent and make supplication to you in the land of their captors saying we have sinned we have committed iniquity we have acted wickedly and they return to you with all their heart and with all their soul in the land of their enemies who carry them into exile and pray to you towards the land that you gave to their fathers the city that you have chosen and the house which you which i had built for your name then hear their prayer and their supplication in heaven your dwelling place maintain their cause and forgive your people who have sinned against you as well as all their transgressions they have made they have transgressed against you and grant them mercy because their captors so they before the, i'm sorry before their captors so they may have mercy on them for they are your people and your inheritance that you brought out of egypt out of the middle of the iron furnace may your eyes be open to the supplication of your servant and to the supplication of your people israel listening to them whenever they cry to you for you have set them apart from among all the peoples of the earth to be your inheritance as you spoke by the hand of moses your servant when you brought our fathers out of egypt my lord adonai when solomon finished praying this entire prayer and petition to adonai he arose from before the altar of adonai from kneeling on his knees with his hands spread out towards heaven and he stood and blessed all the congregation of israel with a loud voice saying blessed be adonai who has given rest to his people israel according to all that he promised not a single word has failed of all this good promise which he promised by the hand of moses his servant may adonai elohenu be with us as he was with our fathers may he not leave or forsake us may he incline our hearts to him to walk in all his ways and to keep his mitzvah his statutes and his ordinances which he commanded our fathers may these words of mine with which i made supplication before adonai be near adonai elohenu day and night so that he may maintain the cause of his servant and the cause of his people israel as each day requires may all the peoples of the earth know that adonai is god he is god and there is no other let your heart therefore be wholly devoted to adonai elohenu to walk in his statutes and to keep his commandments as it is today now the king and all israel with him offered sacrifices before adonai solomon offered a sacrifice of fellowship offerings to adonai twenty-two thousand oxen and a hundred twenty thousand sheep so the king and all the children of israel dedicated the house of adonai on that same day the king consecrated the middle of the court that was before the house of adonai for there he burnt he offered the burnt offering and the grain offering and the fat of the fellowship offering because the bronze altar that was before adonai was too small to accommodate the burnt offering the grain offering and the fat of the fellowship offering so solomon and all israel with him celebrated the festival at that time a great congregation from the entrance of hana to the wadi of egypt before adonai eloheinu seven days and then seven more days 14 days in all on the eighth day he sent the people away and they blessed the king and went to their tents joyful and glad of heart over all the goodness that adonai had shown to his servant david and to his people israel and the second reading is from Second Kings, chapter twelve, verses one to twenty-two. This is essentially uh, chapter twelve of Second Kings. Jehoash restores the temple. Jehoash was seven years old when he became king. Jehoash began his reign in the seventh year of Jehu, and he reigned forty years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Zibiah of Beersheba. Now Je Jehoash did what was right in Adonai's eyes all his days, just as Jehoiada, the, the Kohen, instructed him. The high places, however, were not taken away. The people were still sacrificing and burning incense on the high places. Then Jehoash said to the Kohenim, all the money of the, of the sacred donations brought to the house of Adonai, the money in exchange for each person's valuation, as well as all the money that anyone's heart prompts him to bring to the house of Adonai, let the Kohanim receive it each from one of the treasurers so that they may repair the damage to the house whenever any damage is found. So here again, that's that free will offering that's parallel to what happened um, in the original building of the tent of meeting. But by the 23rd year of King Jehoash, the Kohanim still had not repaired the damage to the house. Then King Jehoash summoned Jehoiada, the Kohen, and the other Kohanim, and said to them, Why are you not repairing the damage to the house? Now therefore take no more money 
from your treasurers, but hand it over for the damage to the house. The Kohanim agreed that they would take no more money from the people, nor would they repair the damage of the house. But Jehoiada the Kohen took a chest, bore a, bored a hole in its lid, and placed it beside the altar on the right side as one entered the house of Adonai. The priestly guards of the threshold deposited there all the money that was brought in brought to the house of Adonai. Whenever they saw it, there was a large amount of money in a chest of royal scribe, and the Kohen Gadol would come up put the money in bags and count the money that was found in the house of Adonai. Then they would give the money that was weighed out into the hands of those who did the work, who had been overseeing the house of Adonai. They, in turn, would pay it out to the carpenters and the builders who worked on the house of Adonai, and to the masons and the stone cutters, and for buying timber and cut stone to repair the damage to Adonai's house, and for all that was laid out for the house to, to repair it. But there was no silver cup snuffers, bowls, trumpets, and no vessels of gold or vessels of silver made for the house of Adonai from the money brought to the house of Adonai. So they gave it to those that did that work, and with, with it they repaired the house of Adonai. They did not check on the men to whom they gave the money to pay the workers, for they dealt faithfully. The money from the guilt offering and money from the sin offering was not brought into the house of Adonai. It was for the Kohanim. Then King Hazael of Aram marched and attacked Gath and captured it, and next Hazael set his face to march against Jerusalem. But King Jehoash of Judah took all the sacred objects that his father, fathers Jehoshaphat, Je Jehoram, and Ahaziah, kings of Judah, had dedicated in his own sacred objects and all the gold that was founded in the treasuries of the house of Adonai in the royal palace and sent them to King Hazael of Aram. So he withdrew from Jerusalem. Now the rest of the acts of Joash and all that he did are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Judah? But his courtiers arose, conspired against him, and assassinated jo Joash at Beth Milo on, on the way that goes down to Sila, that's S-I-L-L-A. His courtiers, Josachar, son of Shimeath, and Jehozabed, son of Shomer, struck him down, and he died. Then they buried him. Shabbat shalom, everyone. Welcome to Shabbat service. Oh, I'm sorry. There's another tab going off. I've got multiple tabs going, so uh, hopefully that doesn't happen again as I'm doing this recording. Now, the rest of the acts of Jehoash and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Judah? Um, and, and again, he was struck down, and they buried him with his fathers in the city of David. His son, Amaziah, became the king in his place. And we have the final reading um, coming from the book of Ezekiel, chapter 40, 45, um, verse 1 through 46, verse 24. And hopefully we don't have any more tabs that begin to play on their own. Like I said, we never know what's going to happen when we record live, and I don't go back and fix it. So uh, this is this is live recording at its best. So we are going to read all of uh, chapter forty-five and forty-six of Ezekiel. Chapter forty-five, the Levitical land. When you allot the land for inheritance, set apart an offering to Adonai. A holy portion of the land, the length will be twenty-five thousand. And the width will be 10,000. It will be holy within all its surrounding borders. Out of this, there will be a holy place, 500 long by 500 wide square all around, and 50 cubits for the open land surrounding it. From this area, you are to measure a length of 25,000 and a width of 10,000, in which will be the sanctuary, which is most holy. It is to be the holy portion of the land, the Kohenim ministering in the sanctuary who draw near to serve at Anai. It will be a place for their houses as well as a place consecrated for the sanctuary. An area 25,000 long by 10,000 wide will be for the Levites, the, min the ministers of the house. It will be a possession for themselves, 20 chambers. You will give the city possession an area 5,000 wide by 25,000 long alongside the offering of the holy allotment. It will be for the whole house of Israel, the prince's allotment. The prince will have a portion on either side of the holy allotment in the city's property adjacent to the holy offering and the city's property on the west side, westward and on the east side, eastward. Its length will be will correspond to one of the tribal portions 
from the western boundary to the eastern boundary it will be land for him as a possession in israel my princes will no longer oppress my people they will give land to the house of, of israel according to their tribes thus says edonai elohim let it be enough for you princes of israel get rid of violence and destruction execute justice and righteousness take away your oppression from my people it is a declaration of Adonai. You are to have just balances, an honest dry measure and an honest liquid measure. The dry and liquid measure will be of a uniform measure. The bath will continue a tenth part of a, of a homer and the ephah a tenth part of a homer. The standard measure will be the homer. The shekel will be 20 geras plus 20, uh, 20 geras, 20 plus 25 15 shekels will be, will be your mina. This is the offering that you are to set apart a sixth of an ephah out of a homer of wheat, a sixth of an ephah out of a homer of barley, along with a set portion of oil, a bath of oil, as the tithe of the bath for each quart, which is 10 baths, or a homer, since 10 baths are a homer, and one lamb, one lamb of the flock out of 200 from the well-watered pastures of israel these are for the grain offering burnt offering and fellowship offerings to make atonement for them it is a declaration of the adonai all the people of the land must give this contribution to the prince in israel it will be the prince's role to give the burnt offerings grain offerings and drink offerings at the feast new moons and shabbatot in all the modim of the house of Israel, he will prepare the sin offering, the meal offering, the burnt offering, and the fellowship offerings to make atonement for the house of Israel. Offerings for Moedim, and these are appointed times. Thus says Adonai Elohim in the first month. In the first day of the month, take a young bull without blemish and purify the sanctuary. The Kohen will take some of the blood of the sin offering and put it on, upon the doorpost of the house and upon the four corners of the ledge of the altar and upon the post of the gates of the inner court. So you will do on the seventh day of the month for everyone who sins unintentionally or through ignorance. So you will make atonement for the house. In the first month, on the 14th day of the month, you will have the Passover, a feast of seven days when matzah will be eaten. On that day, the prince will prepare a bull as a sin offering for himself and for all the people of the land. He will prepare a burnt offering to Adonai for the seven days of the feast, seven bulls and seven rams without blemish daily for seven days and a male goat daily for a sin offering. He will prepare as a grain offering, an ephah for a bull and an ephah for a ram and a hen of oil for each ephah. He will do this in the seventh month on the 15th day of the month during the feast for seven days for sin offering as well as for as well as burnt offering, grain offering as well as oil. Chapter 46, thus says Adonai Elohim, the gate of the inner court that faces the east will be shut for the six working days on Yom Shabbat. It will be open and in the day of the new moon, it will be opened. The prince will enter by way of the porch of the gate from outside and stand by the post of the gate. Then the Kohanim will prepare his burnt offering and his fellowship offering. They will worship at the threshold of the gate and then go out. The gate will not be shut until the evening. The people of the land will worship at the door of, the, of that gate before Adonai on the Shabbatot and new moons. The burnt offering that the prince offers to Adonai on Yom Shabbat will be six lambs without blemish and a ram without blemish. The grain offering will be an ephah for the ram. The grain offering for the lambs will be a gift of his hand and a hen of oil for an ephah. On the day of the new moon, it will be a young bull without blemish, six lambs and a ram. They must be without blemish. He will prepare a grain offering, an ephah for the bull, and an ephah for the ram, for the lambs, whatever his hand may reach, and then and a hen of oil for an ephah. When the prince enters, he will enter by way of the porch of the gate, and he will also exit by that way. When the people of the land come before Adonai at the Modim, whoever enters by the way at the north gate to worship will exit by way at the south gate. Whoever enters by way at the south gate must exit by way at the north gate. He should not return by the way of the gate where he came in, since he must exit straight ahead. When they enter, the prince will come in among them. When they go out, they will go out together. At the feast of the Moedim, the grain offering will be an ephah for a bull and an ephah for a ram and for the lambs, a gift of his hand and a hen of oil for an ephah. Now, if the prince 
prepares a free will offering, burnt offering, or fellowship offerings as a free will offering to Adonai. The gate for him facing east must be open for him. Then he will prepare his burnt offering and his fellowship offerings as he does on Yom Shabbat. Then he will go out. After he, at, he exits, the gate should be shut. You are to prepare a lamb of the first year without blemish for a burnt offering to Adonai daily. Morning by mo morning, you are to prepare it. Also, you will prepare a grain offering with it with it morning by morning, a sixth of an ephah and a third of a hen of oil to moisten the fine flour, a grain offering to Adonai continually. It is a perpetual statute. They will prepare the lamb, the grain offering, and the oil morning by morning for continual burnt offering. Thus says Adonai Elohim, if the prince gives a gift to any of his sons as an inheritance, it will belong to his sons. It will be their possession by inheritance. But if he gives of his inheritance as a gift to one of his servants, it will be his until the year of liberty. When it will revert to the prince, his inheritance will, will belong to his sons. The prince must not take from the people's inheritance, evicting them wrongfully out of their property. He must give inheritance to his sons out of his own property, so that my people will not be displaced any one from his own property. Then he brought me through the entrance that was at the side of the gate into the holy chambers for the Kohenim looking north. Behold, there was a place at the far western end. He said to me, this is the place where the Kohenim will boil the guilt offering and the sin offering where they will bake the grain offering so they do not bring them into the outer court to consecrate the people. Then he brought me out to the outer courtyard and led me past the four corners of the courtyard. Behold, in every corner of the courtyard, there was another courtyard. In the four corners of the courtyard, there were enclosed courts, 40 cubits long by 30 wide. These four in the corners had the same size. There were rows of masonry surrounding them. Surrounding the four boiling places were built under the surrounding rows. And he said to me, these are the boiling places where the ministers of the house will boil the sacrifices of the people. And that is the end of the readings for the half Torah. We're going to go uh, do a quick recap of all of the Torah portion and the half Torah portions. You know, I, basically the parallels in all of them is 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 the 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 preparation, the, the building of the tabernacle, the building of the temple, uh, the, the 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 preparation for service to Adonai. Um, so via Cal, in a nutshell, basically. Um, we can say um, it means and he gathered and Moses assembled the people of Israel and reiterates to them the commandment to observe Shabbat. And we talked about Shabbat being the seventh day of the week. Now, again, for those that worship Adonai on any other day, um, you know, that is fine. I know when Yeshua, you know, if that's if that's the only day that you have, of, of course, you know, in the, in, in the time that we... You know, in, in our world, there are some certain, there are some um, occupations that have to work, weekends even. So it makes it very difficult. And I know in, in the medical profession, you don't really have a choice. Um, and other professions, you don't really have much of a choice. Um, in the Holy Land, um, actually, Saturday, um, things are shut down. Um, as of Friday evening at sun at sundown, so um, it is kept. It is it is kept holy. But outside of the Holy Land, as I mentioned, there's a lot of occupations that uh, continue to work th through the weekend. And when Yeshua is here, uh, th all of this will be straightened out. <laughs> I can guarantee you that we will all be keeping Shabbat at the same time. And we will be keeping it with him. Hallelujah. So there will be no confusion. He then conveys Adonai's, Moses then conveys Adonai's instructions in making the tabernacle. And the people donated very graciously and had to be told to stop. <laughs> they had more than enough. Um, they were um, donating gold, silver, copper, um, or bronze, uh, blue, purple, red, red dyed wool, goat hair, animal skins, wood, olive oil, herbs, precious stones, um, and um, a team of, of 
ruach filled artisans made made the tabernacle and everything that went inside the tabernacle all the furnishings um, from the the brazen altar to the laver to the to the menorah to the table of showbread to the to the incense altar and to uh, also the veil that separated the holy place from the holy of holies everything curtains you name it um the posts the pegs the um the poles to carry the ark of the covenant everything was constructed and um as we saw then uh continuing in peck a day um which means uh, uh, amounts of or accounting the accounts of an accounting uh, is made of the gold silver and bronze that was donated by the people um, and um, also the priestly garments were made um, for Aaron and his sons and then at the end the the Shekinah glory the divine presence of God uh, a cloud appeared over um, over the tent of meeting signifying the divine presence has come to dwell there and in the half Torah portion, uh, one of the half Torah portions, we see that the Holy Temple, components of the Holy Temple was um, done by a wise craftsman, Hiram of Tyre, which indeed parallels the Torah portion describing the construction of the tabernacle by the wise Bezalel and, and Aholiab and, and the wise uh, crew of craftspeople. King Solomon called for Hiram, an expert coppersmith, to create copper columns to flank the largest doorway of the Holy Temple. The columns were, were 18 cubits, approximately 30 feet high, and were topped by two capitals, which were intricately carved with pomegranates and palm leaves. And the right column was named Jachin, and the left one was called Boaz. Hiram also built bronze basins. Um, or I see, as it's called in the text, it stood on 12 oxen, three looking towards the north and three looking towards the west and three looking towards the south and three looking towards the east. And the sea was set upon, upon them above and all their hinder parts were inward. In this basin was a large mikvah. The priests would immerse before they served in the temple. And then Solomon blessed the people and he made a long prayer to Adonai. Um, and we saw that the the, the 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 temple was filled with the cloud, the presence of God um, there. Also in this second uh the second reading in Second Kings chapter twelve, we saw King Joash restoring the temple uh, because people the, the people had strayed from Adonai and he was restoring uh they, they had let the temple go. Yeah, they weren't keeping repairs up or anything, and and he was bringing the worship back uh, to the temple. And then, of course, in Ezekiel, we see um, we see that Ezekiel is given a vision, and and this is thought to also you know mirror um, mirror the millennial reign also because Ezekiel also saw um, saw that prophetically as well and we are going to be ending in, in our bible study this upcoming week we are going to be reading that and getting into much greater detail uh with that and the recapping of it you know uh ending the book of ezekiel this week so that is the end of that the torah and the half torah you see how they they both mirror one another uh with the tabernacle and everything that went into the construction of the tabernacle, the blessing of the tabernacle, how the how the cloud filled the tabernacle, which is the Shekinah glory of, of the Lord being present with the people to the construction of the holy temple, uh, which was stationary at that point. Then in Jerusalem, Solomon was allowed to, to get that temple built. That was a promise that Adonai made to David. Um, and so the temple was built and when, when, um, after Solomon had prayed, then the glory filled the temple as well. 
So we're going to conclude with prayer and we'll take a short break and then come back with the second segment of Shabbat. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for your promises. We see your promises being fulfilled. The promises that you made to King David. And that you loved your people enough to come dwell with them. To, to, so they knew that you were there with them. You led them through the wilderness as far as the tabernacle goes. And you dwelled in the tabernacle. You gave them the sign when it was it, when it was okay for them to continue to travel. And when it was not okay to travel. When you wanted them to stay stationary. Uh, you were constantly with your people. And you're constantly with us. And you never leave us. You never forsake us. You're a wonderful wonderful father and we love you so much we thank you holy spirit for leading and guiding us through this segment of shabbat service father god we give you all of our praise and we give give you all of our honor we honor you and we give you all the glory all the glory belongs to you and we pray this in the mighty name the name above all names the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. Amen and Amen. Take a short break and we'll come back with a second segment of Shabbat service. <laughs> 